Here we go. Mr. Dvorak of the uh, Post Gazette for many years. I guess you could call this the full court press. Tell the folks what they're seeing right here. That's a full page ad by a new Pitt basketball coach, just uh, telling people he's excited to be in the town. And that's a nice little thought. You know, most of them take out the ad when they're leaving. That's right. Say what a great time they had here. And uh, he's promising you some uh, wonderful things. Listen, as we leave eventually, go to retirement, Greg Finley, Chris Mack, a couple of bookends, they're ready to go to work, taught by the great professor Lanny Frateri. We're going to talk baseball. Why don't you talk a little baseball? But you got the penguin gear on. We'll let him do that, too. What do you think about the Buccos this year, Greg? Uh, they're, here, they're step over here. You're a handsome young man. Get they're close. an interesting team this year because they didn't really get an identity of this offseason. They said they're not rebuilding, but they traded McCutcheon. They traded Cole. But they got Dickerson, who was an all-star last year. So they're trying to show fans that they're trying to compete again. But the Cubs going out and getting Darvish and making their team better with Happy getting better each year he's going to play. I think the Cubs are going to be too tough in the NL Central. But I think the Pirates will be about 500 at best. Well, as your great teacher would say many times on those broadcasts, there was no doubt about it that <laughs> the Penguins... Right the, the yeah, pen go, right <laughs> go ahead. The Penguins are in the postseason. Can they three-peat? I hope so. I mean, everybody's hoping so, but you just, it's going to be tough. I mean, last year, two years ago now, they have to go through that entire playoff process and it's just an absolute grind now they got to do it again for a third straight year they have what it takes they have the right coach they have the right players but we'll see what happens how much does this guy mean to pirate broadcast oh he, he keeps us in line i mean when it's me and jack zarensic in there and it starts to get off the rails because we're having too much fun that's when uh they reel you in yep that's when greg reels us back in and um Especially on a day like today when we got a, a full day. Uh, we started at 11 in the morning and we'll be on right until the very bitter end tonight with a split double header. Can I say something? Back in the day when I was his age, maybe a little older, we were here, KDK Radio, listening to people like Lanny and company. It used to be great being at this plant all day while the Pirates were yeah. playing baseball and we were actually getting paid for it. Well, I was just telling Greg a story. He wasn't here Friday afternoon, but Friday afternoon there was a half dozen of us in the room watching the game uh, as things happened in the 10th inning when we thought Nick Castellanos was safe at home and then they end up reviewing it and calling him out and everybody's yelling and it was, you know, a handful of us in there watching the game together enjoying opening day. So, yeah, it's, there's worse places we could be. Hey, listen, great job, young man. Thank you. And Lanny, good teacher? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's the best. He taught me, but he was grading on the curb, and he said, Pratt, get out of the business, okay? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Great young kid. I love what these young people do, these incredible, talented young people who help us. And this is an incredible, talented, older person who's been doing it for a long time. Some memories of opening day when you were working for great papers like the Post-Gazette and out there for the Associated Press covering baseball and doing what you did. We used to sing, take me out of the ball game. Stop it! <laughs> Nothing like opening day. Nothing like opening day. Well, I remember, and there's going to be some snow tonight. Obviously, it's in the forecast. I remember opening days at Ford's Field at Three Rivers when there were snow, well, snowflakes in the air, not in the stands. But this is a different time and place. And um, <laughs> People are a little crazy when it comes to their baseball. Oh, a little. Are you kidding me? The I mean, reference to snowflakes. You've got folks. this emotional contagion going on. If this happens, that happens, and this happens, and they get lightning in a bottle, and Chicago loses uh, its airplane, uh, they could <laughs> win it all. If they don't win it all this year, something's wrong. You mark my words here. And uh, the promotional schedule came out. We get the defibrillator night uh, coming up, uh, so uh, see if we can get a pulse. <laughs> Listen, you know it's bad uh, when they are looking at a possible bobblehead for you, and the bobblehead looks like it's in better physical condition than you are. That's what happens wouldn't when you've be been very much of a stretch. No, I when you've that. been around this long, this young man's really yes, talented. Yes, I, I know. And I listen. Uh, a baseball opener means so much to so many different people, and I hope uh, people uh, just enjoy their time at the ball yard this year and. Uh, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Before you go, just a couple more things. But I want to talk to you about the Pirates, obviously. Mm -hmm. Gregory, uh, Gregory Polanco gets the homer. 13-10, they win that one, which seems like years ago, but it was just a few days ago. So they haven't been able to play because of the weather today, a doubleheader. Trevor Williams gets to start. Michael Former, that's the first game. It's underway right now as we speak, 93-7, the fan. Home opener tomorrow, Minnesota. Just some early thoughts. What could be a decent year to begin if blank happens. Well, if the bullpen holds together. Uh, you've got good young pitchers in the rotation who have decent stuff uh, in Tyone, Williams, Cool, 
Um, you've got, though, uh, I, I think it, some holes to fill in that bullpen, as we saw on opening day. You know, Michael Feliz and a guy you thought you could count on every single day, Felipe Rivero, both get shelled, uh, and it leads the game into extra innings. Uh, so if the bullpen holds together, I think this is more of uh, maybe a closer to 80-win team. If it doesn't hold together, or you run into it, multiple issues in the starting rotation, or this offense that we saw some flashes from, certainly, on Friday afternoon, doesn't keep producing like that, although 13 runs is probably expecting a bit much on a day-to-day basis. Uh, but there, there's, it, as Bob said, you know, you've got to have a lot of things fall just the right way for this team to compete with a team like the Chicago Cubs or even Milwaukee Brewers at the top of the division. Um, there's a chance that if you pull just one card out of that house, the whole thing could come down and you're looking at more of a 70-win ball club this year. So I think the the... the most fragile card in that house of cards is probably the bullpen. Hey, they're undefeated. Uh, where are the haters now? Come on. They gotta, hey, they got to play three games in like a period of 28 hours. Yeah. So, uh, that's why I said defibrillator night. But anyhow, uh, what, what I, <laughs> I feel like it's the opening act for like any young man, ladies and gentlemen. This I, doesn't stop. I call, By the way, Greg, he was a comedian, just in case I, you're wondering. I called to ask what time the game starts tomorrow for the opener, and they said, what time can you get here? So <laughs> I don't know if they're, they're sold out or not. All right, let's shift gears quickly. We're going to keep you around. I know you got to go, but i got to ask you about this national championship mm-hmm. game. Can Michigan slow down Villanova tomorrow night? We'll see. I don't know. Vill- Villanova's been the best team in basketball, I think, all year from start to finish. They've had their hiccups, certainly, throughout the course of the season. But, I mean, Jay Wright just coaches them. Uh, he, you look at him and that, just looking at Jay Wright tells you exactly what to expect from Villanova. They're polished, they know exactly what they want to do, and they're going to go out and do it. Um, although, you can't take anything away from John Beeline either, who's, who's done a great job with this Michigan team. So, um, I think it's going to be a better ball game than some might expect, but I think Villanova it backs up the fact that they've been the best team all year. Villanova shoots well like they did uh, last night. Um, they're the obvious favorite, but you can't fall asleep on Michigan because of that defense. And I don't know, they, there are horses for courses and uh, 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 boxing styles that match up. This could, be a, this could be a challenge, but Villanova just seems to be the powerhouse team. So along with 93.7, the fan, Cook and Pony, when you get Ron Cook, Bill Brink, along with the Associated Press, uh, Gene Collier, the great Gene Collier, and Jason Mackey. What do you get? You get the Post-Gazette. That's the front page sports today, but this is the real Masters Challenge, Tiger Woods. Did you see what they did there? They yeah. put him on the back, and it says back. <laughs> <laughs> this is genius. This is why. But hopefully, out hopefully, bucks. come a week from today, he has a strong back nine, and he's in contention. Do you think, because of some of the top five finishes, top ten finishes, he is a legitimate favorite to win the Masters, in which a lot of people are saying he rightfully should be. Favorite? I don't know if I'd go favorite, but it would be a big surprise. But uh, you know, he's he loves that course. The course is made for him. There's just a lot of good golfers right now. What's it say on the back of that page again? Let me show you. It says, it says back, right? Back. Yeah. Can his back stay healthy? That's the question. Oh, he went right there. I went, I went for it, Bob. That's right. uh, if he can stay See? healthy, then yeah, I mean, he's, I, he's got a chance. I don't want to say I'm getting old, but my back goes out more than I do. How long have you had a week back? About a week back. Hey, listen, but, um, I'm honored, I'm excited, ready to go. Uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Capel, there you go, head coach. Heather like everyone at the Pitt Athletic Department, congratulations. Real class act, full page ad in the Post-Gazette, wishing you nothing but the best. And by the way, get those Panthers season basketball tickets now. And he's the ticket when it comes to Pirate Baseball, and along with Greg, and of course, uh, Jack, what's his name? <laughs> Zerinzik. We'll go with Jack Z, that's easy. Jack Z, I can't spell it, but I can say it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have a great rest of your day. I'll be there for the home opener. You'll see me, my teeth chattering tomorrow on Federal Street. Stop by 9 until 12.30. He'll be there. Greg Dalis will be there. And Bruce Tanner is going to drop by as well on the Disk Institute of Pittsburgh Newsline. Have a great day, everybody. Good afternoon.